Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I wanna talk about Watch OS 10. This is Apple's next major update for the Apple Watch. And this is hands down the biggest update that we've had to the watch since it first came out in 2015. We have three major things I wanna cover in this update. The first one is a huge overhaul to the way you navigate the watch. The second one is all the redesign applications. And the third one is we have new watch faces and also a few miscellaneous things I wanna cover at the end of the video as well. So let's go ahead roll the intro and jump in right now. First up is the new way you navigate the watch. You were probably able to see in the intro that it looks a little bit different when I swipe up on my watch face. And that's because in watchOS 10, when you're on your watch face, it no longer opens control center when you swipe up. Instead, it reveals a smart widget stack. So at the top left, we have our day and date. We also have the digital time as well as the second count. And then if you scroll, you can see that we have widgets which are recommended by the system and you can also edit these. So you can see for me, I have all of my calendar events. I also have the weather, my activity rings, and also this one at the very bottom, which is a shortcut to some applications is very useful as well. And once you get to the bottom, you can also click this to see all of your applications. So when you're in this view, you can do a few different things. You can press and hold on the widgets and you can choose to add a widget by clicking on this plus icon. You can see we have a whole bunch that we can choose from. You can pretty much pick from any application on the watch. And you can also rearrange these so you can pick one up and move it to the top. And also if there is a widget that the system is recommending that you always wanna keep at the top of this list, you can choose to click on the yellow pin icon on the top right hand corner of that widget. So why would Apple make this change? Well, there are a lot of people out there that don't use a watch face like this that has a lot of information. And in fact, the photos watch face is actually the most popular one on the Apple Watch. And as you may know, you can't get that much detailed information when you're using the photos watch face. So you can imagine for people that use that watch face, it is now a lot easier for them to simply flick up and see information that's useful to them throughout the day. So here is a very simple watch face just for an example. And if you're using something like this throughout the day, you can imagine it's going to be a lot easier now to access information that you wanna see throughout the day simply by flicking up on the watch face like this. Now with this change to navigation, you may be wondering how do you access your control center? Well, that is now accessed using the side button on the watch. And personally, I love this change. It may be a little bit frustrating at first, and when people first update their Apple Watches, whether you're updating in the fall when it comes out or if you're putting the beta on your watch right now, you may be a little bit frustrated the first few days you use it, I know I was, but you definitely get used to it, and as you start using it every day, you'll realize that this is a much better way to use the Apple Watch. I think the only time it gets a little bit annoying is when you're on the watch face. When you wanna access Control Center, it definitely was easier to simply swipe up instead of clicking on the side button. However, it gets extremely useful when you are in applications. Because as you may know, in watchOS 9, the only way to access Control Center in an application was to do kind of an awkward gesture where you press and hold the very bottom of the watch and then swipe up. Luckily, we no longer have to do that and we can access Control Center with a simple click of the side button from any application. And with this side button now being used to access your control center, we no longer have access to the dock on the Apple Watch. So if you use that feature and you are pinning some of your favorite applications in the dock, unfortunately that feature is no longer here. The only kind of similar thing that we have is if you double click the crown, it's going to show three recent applications. So I wanna hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. I feel like if you're someone who uses a watch face with a lot of information on it, this may be a little bit annoying for you because all the info that you want is already on your watch face and you may not need to swipe up to see more information. But I think if you're someone who uses a very simple watch face, it's going to be very convenient for you to either swipe up or use the crown to see all of these widgets. So now I wanna show you some of the redesigned applications in watchOS 10. I don't think I'll have time to show you every single redesign, but I'll show you some of my favorites. So starting with messages, you can see that all of your pinned conversations are now the first thing that you're gonna see when you open up messages, which is very convenient. I also like the update that they have made to the activity app. So you can see here, when we open it up, we now have shortcuts in the corners to see more information. If we click this on the top left, we can see our weekly summary for our move ring. 
We can also click the bottom left icon to see our sharing progress for our activity with our friends. And we can also click this button on the bottom right to see all of our awards. If we scroll in this activity app, you can see we now have a dedicated page for each move ring. So here is move, here is exercise, and here is stand. If we go a bit lower, we can see our steps and distance as well as flights climbed. And then here we can also see all of our workouts we've done throughout the day. The one thing that's annoying about this update to the activity app is I know some people would open up the activity app and scroll all the way down to see their steps. And now because we have pages, it now takes a little bit longer to get to the very bottom of this application. So hopefully in an update, maybe in beta two or beta three, we can have an easier way to see our steps throughout the day without going all the way to the bottom. I also like the updates that we have to the stopwatch. So if I open it here, you can see the screen is now completely white. And if I start the stopwatch, you can see that the UI looks a little bit different. And I really like the change they've made here. So before in watchOS 9, you'd have to tap on the screen to change the view. But now you can simply scroll the crown in order to reveal more information. And I really like the way it animates as well. And also in watchOS 10, you can see that when you have a timer going in the background, it's also now going to show in the very top of your watch face with that orange icon. The weather app has also been completely redesigned, and I think this is probably the biggest redesigned app in watchOS 10. This looks a lot more like the iPhone version of the weather application. You can see that we have a live background, which is going to represent the actual conditions outside. If we click this menu icon, you can see this is where it really looks like iOS. We can scroll through all of our cards and see all of our cities right here with the live weather conditions. And also you can see the card is showing the conditions for that city as well. And sort of similar to the activity app, we have different pages that we can flick through in weather. So here we can see it's showing our current conditions. We can also flick and see temperature throughout the day. And we can also scroll again to see the day by day temperature. And I also really like the updates that we have to the music application. In particular, one change is my favorite. So when you open up music, you can see that now playing is really accessible on the top right of the application. That was one thing I didn't like about watchOS 9 is it was always really tough to get to your now playing, whether it was playing on your watch or your phone. And if you click on now playing, you can see that the screen is now completely different. We can finally see album art on the Apple Watch. So thank you, Apple, it was long overdue. I always want to see the actual album art of the album I was listening to, and now we finally have that in watchOS 10. And another change I really like in watchOS 10 is when you're viewing your list of songs on the Apple Watch, you can now finally see the album art in the list of songs. So whenever I'm trying to pick a song on my iPhone, I always go by the album art in order to find that song really quickly. And when I was picking a song on my Apple Watch, it always took a little bit longer just because it was plain text. But now on watchOS 10, you can see on your songs list, it now shows all of your artwork on the left hand side. And we have redesigned apps throughout the entire system, as I said. Now, I'm not gonna have time to go through every application, but I'll just show you a few more here. So the heart rate application now has a pretty cool animation when it's measuring your heart rate. And we also have a completely redesigned sleep application, again, with these full screen pages that you can scroll through. And really quickly, I thought I was done, but I just wanna show you one more. So this is World Clock. I really like the update they've done to World Clock. It looks a lot more like the weather app. You can click the menu icon and scroll through all of your cities. And I really like the way that the graphic looks on this application. And also, as I was browsing through all of my applications, you probably noticed that your app view has also been completely redesigned. So your app view is no longer a random shape cluster of all of your applications. Instead, it is a vertically scrolling pane that you can still reorganize. However, you cannot zoom out and view all of your applications as you could in watchOS 9. Instead, it makes a lot more sense now. You can still organize your applications the way you want. However, the list is always going to scroll down instead of in a random direction as we had before. So the final thing I wanna cover is the new watch faces in watchOS 10. This first new watch face is called Palette. This is a very simple but colorful watch face. You can see we have a bunch of styles we can choose from. So we have Iris, Emerald, Azure, Marigold, Wisteria, Dandelion, and a few other ones right here. I think my favorite one is probably Wisteria because it matches my watch band right here. So let us know your thoughts on this new Palette watch face in the comments down below. And the final watch face is called Snoopy. Now I'm probably never going to use this, but if you're a fan of Snoopy, you can now have it on your watch. And every time you raise your wrist, you're gonna get a fun animation as you can see like that. 
A few other miscellaneous changes in watchOS 10. The first one is in the mindfulness application. If you open it here, you can see we have a new section to log our state of mind. If I click on this, you can see that we can click on get started and then log how we're feeling right now or how we felt throughout the day. So let's click on right now and we can scroll through a bunch of different moods. So very pleasant, pleasant, slightly pleasant. And you can see we have a very colorful and cool animation to go along with it. So Apple seems to think that when you log your state of mind, it can improve your overall well-being. We also have a few updates inside of the workouts application. So you can see here that the cards inside of workouts now look a little bit different. And when you go to start a workout, the page that you view is a little bit different as well. You can see it says the name of the workout that you're about to start when it's counting down. And also when you swipe over, we no longer have a plus icon to add a new workout. Instead, if you wanna add a workout, you have to first click on end. And then from there, you can choose to add a new workout. And also new in watchOS 10, when you're doing a cycling workout, you're now able to view your workout on your iPhone as well. This is very useful if you mount your phone on your bike, whether you're doing an indoor cycle or an outdoor cycle, a lot of people like to mount their iPhone on their bike and you can now view the metrics for your workout right on your phone, not just your watch. And the Compass app also has a really great update in watchOS 10. So if you're out exploring in the wilderness, your Compass app is now going to show you the last place that you had cellular connection. And it's also going to show you the last place that you had service overall to call 911. So these two pinpoints are important because the first one overall reception is connection to your carrier, but it's also going to show you the last time that you had a connection to any carrier, which is going to let you contact 911 in an emergency. So that is watchOS 10. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is hands down the biggest update that we've had to the Apple Watch ever. As you use it throughout the day, you're gonna notice that every single little interaction and animation has been tweaked and it just feels a lot more fluid and connected. I like the animation when you go to see all of your applications. I also like when you go into Control Center as it kind of floats in from the bottom. And also when you activate Apple Pay, you get a nice animation from the side as you can see there. So you're gonna notice all of these very small changes everywhere throughout the system. And this is probably one of my favorite updates ever to the Apple Watch. So let us hear your thoughts in the comments down below and tell us what is your number one new favorite feature in watchOS 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael and I'll see you next time.